So all, we all learned in med school that hepatitis E virus infection can cause an acute liver disease, which is usually self-limiting and does not cause any major problems. However, in recent years we learned that in certain settings, for example in immunocompromised patients, such as organ transplant recipients or patients with advanced HIV infection, that hepatitis E virus infection can cause chronic causes. And this can be serious. Patients can die from persistent hepatitis E virus infections. So, if this is a problem in certain settings, it's um, obvious that we need to diagnose in an appropriate way. Usually you detect a virus infection by a screening assay, antibody assays, which is followed by confirmatory assays, for example, direct detection of the virus when the antibodied assay has been positive. So what we learned in the last years again is that the performance of different assays to detect antibodies against hepatitis E is largely differing. So for example, in Germany, the assays that have been previously used um, detect in about 2% of the population antibodies against hepatitis E. Nowadays, we learned that um, actually more than 20 and sometimes even 30 percent of the patients test anti-HEV positive. And this obviously has major implications for subsequent testing in which patients do we really need to diagnose hepatitis E by additional assays. And uh, the proof that a patient is indeed infected should come from a detection of hepatitis E virus RNA by PCR. The problem is that in many countries there are no standardized assays available. There are few commercial assays, but uh, they are not approved, for example, by the FDA yet. And even more complicated is the availability of PCR assays. There are no commercial assays available and we at this stage even do not have a WHO standard. Furthermore, we have to consider that there are different hepatitis E genotypes. So in Africa, in Asia, there are frequently infections with HEV genotypes 1 or 2, um, while in Europe and the United States we have infections with the hepatitis E virus genotype 3. And there are few studies really comparing the performance of these PCR assays among different countries. Now, if I have indeed um, shown that the patient is infected with hepatitis E, and if this is infection is persisting, for example, in organ transplant recipients, then the question is, what can I do? And the good news for the patients is that in the last two years, we have um, seen many data showing that ribavirin monotherapy is effective in these patients. Uh, currently, there are different cohort studies ongoing exploring the optimal treatment duration, the optimal dose of ribavirin, but it's quite clear that in many patients ribavirin can lead to a cure of hepatitis E virus infection, even though in few individuals clinical cases of resistance have been described. Um, there are more studies now needed to investigate these few cases, but overall my key messages are first, we have to, should not forget that hepatitis E exists. Secondly, we have to screen for hepatitis E antibodies with appropriate assays, with good sensitivity. Third, we have to test then for the virus. And fourth, if the virus is persisting, we have a treatment option, which is ribavirin.